Hey guys, Multiclassic Gamer here. Welcome back to more Let's Play SpongeBob SquarePants Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. And where were we? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so in the previous episode, we continued on through Bikini Bomb, collecting everything we possibly can for now. For now, because um, there's actually one jellyfish and six uh, doubloons we will not be able to get until way later in the game. And we ended up here inside the Krusty Krab, and I, due to a miscalculation of mine, apparently. We only end up with a 12-minute video even after I said that we would be making 20-minute episodes. So hopefully that will change this episode, okay? Alright, and I don't know why I'm destroying these barrels because we already got all the doubloons out of them. In fact, everything that's left inside Bikini Bomb for now is just this, what's, what's up here in the storage room of the Krusty Krab. So once we collect the uh, tile right there, that will be the very last tile of the entire game. I mean, <laughs> sorry, a Bikini Bomb. God. We're so early into the LP and we're already starting to make mistakes. How awesome is that? Alright, there we go. So, 13 jellyfish is the max amount of jellyfish you will have in Bikini Bomb for now. And uh, also, the max amount of doubloons you will have for now is 126. There's actually um, there's a total of 132 doubloons in, in a Bikini Bomb and 14 jellyfish, but... Again, we won't be able to get to get those last things until way later. Anyways, right here we have the very last letter tile bikini bomb, so let's pick it up. Now, um, before I do that, let me just tell you right now that once you pick up the very last tile of each world, you will be transported to. Well, first things first, you're gonna spin out control for like a bunch of like for 50 quadrillion times, and then you'll be transported inside SpongeBob's mind. Where you will complete a puzzle. Yeah. You can tell it's inside SpongeBob's head because look, you can see his eyeballs and then like there's all this stuff going on inside his head, like this puzzle he here's forming on the like where his brain is supposed to be, and so is like and then we got all this, this crap around here that's basically centered around the theme of the area that we're in. Which is pretty cool. And the puzzle itself, it's ridiculously easy. As you can see we got a time limit up there. That is way more than enough time, okay? I, mean, I guess it makes sense because this game is centered toward little, towards little kids, but still, it's very easy. Like, even little kids could complete this puzzle with no more than less, like a minute. I mean, like no less than a minute left. There it is. So you're probably wondering what's the point of this puzzle? It just shows a picture of a treasure chest. Well, basically. That treasure chest that you guys saw in the picture in the puzzle that we completed, well, we're, you're actually, the moment you return from that puzzle, in the in the same area you got the all the layer tiles in, Spongebob is now wearing a costume. This is his treasure hunting costume. You cannot access this costume through the changing tents. I think there's only like a, well actually, this is, yeah, this is the only costume in the, no, actually there's two costumes in the entire game where you, that you cannot access through the, uh, co from the changing tents, sorry. And uh, you cannot, you cannot switch to any costume while treasure hunting. And okay, so here's what the what the treasure hunting costume would do. Simply put, if you hold the B button, you can use the divining. Wait, what's it called? Divining rod. Yeah, you can use the divining rod. And basically, what it does is when you when you move it in the direction of the treasure chest, it will vibrate. It will make your controller vibrate. That way, it will tell you basically where the treasure chest is, which is right here. You found one of Dutchman's treasures. Find all treasures to defeat the, the Dutchman. And look! We found the Flying Dutchman's dining sock. <laughs> God, that's probably one of the most nostalgic things of this game, is like hearing those kids like go, ew, whenever you find one of the treasures for the Dutchman. It's like really disgusting. There's some treasures like where they, oh. Yeah, little varmint. The time has come for you to join my ghostly crew. No, you didn't give me a chance no, to say goodbye to him. It. Your fate's been decided. Now looky here what I got. Oh no. That's right. Watch the little sticky. <laughs> Dude, you pet nap. Gary. Gary, where are you, boy? Gary! Why did you take Gary, Mr. Dutchman? Why? 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 No one makes my best friends into pirates, and I mean no one! 
And there you have it. Gary has has been our first. I mean, I mean, the Flying Dutchman's first victim, unfortunately, due to SpongeBob's like, I don't know, like, basically put he he pointed fingers at Gary. It was all SpongeBob's fault. Okay, not really. Well, kind of, but not exactly. All right. Well, um, since we got rid of that treasure chest, we, I mean, uh, sorry, the barrel, we can now exit through the back door. This is pretty much this is pretty much what's gonna happen after you complete every world. Basically, like after you complete the lair tiles, get the, you know, complete the puzzle and get the treasure chest, you'll be transported back to Bikini Bomb and end up in SpongeBob's house. So that is kind of annoying. Like, it, like it will be annoying later in the game where, like, you just it it's like starts you back at SpongeBob's house and you know so you just have to sit through a few, sit through a few loading screens in order to get back to where you were. But anyways. Uh, upon exiting SpongeBob's house, we find Squidward in front of his house. I mean, Tiki Mall. Hello, SpongeBob. So nice of you to finally join us. Squidward, am I glad to see you? You won't believe what just happened to me and Gary. I don't have time for another one of your ridiculous tales. Mr. Krabs wants us to get to the Krusty Krab right away, so he can tell us some important news. Important news? Maybe Mr. Krabs is going to announce the Employee of the Month. What are we waiting for? Beats me. You just keep chattering away and I'll see you there when you're done. So that's how it is. Trying to hear the news before me, eh? Well, let's see who can get to the Krusty Krab first. Ah, yeah, sure. Whatever. And there you have it. We now get to race Squidward to the Krusty Krab. Now, here's something really, really, like, well, basically, um... This race is almost impossible to lose. Like, you purposely have to wait for Squidward to get to the Krusty Krab if you want to purposely lose this race and see what happens. And not really much happens. You just get a, like a, like, a, basically the, the, the dialogue between Squidward, Mr. Krabs, and SpongeBob is, is different when you enter the Krusty Krab, depending on whether or not you lose the race. If that's even possible. Like, I don't know how anyone could possibly lose the race unless they're not trying to, because... I don't know, because I think it's pretty... It's a little late to be not knowing your way to the Krusty Krab, especially if, you, if you've seen the show. But, um... Let's actually beat Squidward there before we actually, like, have to see that text. But, uh, oh well, we beat him there, so that's what's important. Once again, we see that more legs doesn't mean more speed. And once again, we see that more holes in your head means less stays inside of it. All right, you two, stop your jabbering. I've got some difficult news to tell you. Business has been very slow lately, so I'm going to shut down the Krusty Krab until it picks up again. Sh -sh -sh shut down the Krusty Krab? I think I'm going to faint. You boys can hang around here or go home, but I can't pay you one way or the other. Sorry. Well, isn't that just great? I'm going home to think of some ways to pay the bills. So long, SpongeBob. What? No paycheck? Okay, so apparently, um, we've got we've been laid off. So, in order to let out my frustration, I'm going to karate chop some barrels. Okay, but seriously, what you're supposed to do at this point is go talk to Mr. Krabs to cheer him up. So let's go into the kitchen and talk to him. Wait a second, the crusty. Wait, the Krusty Krab is going out of business yet Mr. Krabs is making more Krabby Pies? Um... Mystery much? Jeepers, Mr. Krabs. Why do you think our business is so slow? No one Cause I keep on making Krabby Pies and no one eats it's them. too much trouble to leave home. Too bad we can't move the Krusty Krab into their homes. SpongeBob! That's it! We'll do just that! Yeah! What is that? Oh, you wanna move the Krusty Krab! Should I get a hammer? Never mind that. I'm going downtown to set things up. You take this bus ticket and meet me there as soon as you can. And just like that, we get the very first bus ticket of the game, which takes us to downtown Bikini Bottom. Um, hello, Krabby Pie is going to waste. I'll eat them myself. Um, okay, apparently I can't do that, so instead I'm going to trample them. Okay. Alright, more essential pants. Yay! I accomplished putting on pants. Okay, that's not that's not funny. Let's get back to having decent commentary here, can we please? 
Okay. Oh, um... Alright, so that's pretty much it for the Krusty Krab. So, let's on head on out. Now, um, we're- now- at this point, we are now supposed to go to the Krusty Krab- I mean, uh, no, sorry, Downtown Bikini Bottom. And to help Mr. Krabs with what his, uh, plan is, whatever it is. Because we- we don't know exactly yet what he's- what his plan is and what- whether or not it's, like, something crazy or whatever. But for now, what I'm going to do instead, because there are actually two different things you can go. You can either, you can either go to Downtown Bikini Bomb and do what Mr. Krabs wanted to do with you, but there is something else you can do before you go there, and I'm going to do that now. What you want to do next, unless you're, unless you want to go downtown, go to Downtown Bikini Bomb, which we will eventually go later. But for now, um, let's go check on Score because as he. As he said before, he's having his yard sale. Hey, Squidward, what's with all the stuff on your lawn? A squid has to pay his rent somehow, so I'm having a little yard sale to make a few extra sand dollars. Now leave me alone so I can read my book. What you reading? It's called How to Defeat Evil Spirits, okay? Now please, let me read. How to Defeat Evil Spirits? That's just what I need! Can just I what I need! your book, Squidward? You can borrow my book after I'm done with it, okay? So look through my yard sale or whatever, but stop asking about my book. Ah, uh, the classic allowing people to borrow your stuff only after you're done using it. Oh boy. Hey Squidward, this big acorn sure is making a weird buzzing noise. Acorn? You mean that hive I got from my cousin on the coast? No, I mean this big buzzing acorn in the glass case. I bet Sandy would really like this. Oh yeah, I bet your little squirrel friend would really like that acorn. Why don't you buy it for her? <laughs> Name your I love the price, way he said that. He's like, merchant. why don't you buy it for I'll her? I'll sell it to you for 200 sand dollars. <laughs> Start saving your tip money. <laughs> Jeez, 200 sand dollars. God. Ugh, as if the economy didn't suck enough. Okay. So, the next thing you're supposed to do is you're actually supposed to sneak up on school and grab his book. So, um, what you have to do in order to do that is you want to get behind us... ...behind the space that, that occupies Squidward in... I mean, between Squidward and Spongebob's house. And, and then basically you're supposed to hold the L button in order to sneak. This will allow you to sneak up behind Squidward and grab the book. You can probably do this from behind in the side, I mean, from the front and side, but I'm not really sure if that works. I'm pretty sure I've done that before and it doesn't work. Like, maybe he sleeps with his eyes open or something, I don't know. How to Defeat Evil Spirits, Chapter 8, The Flying Dutchman. Any poor soul who awakens the Dutchman must suffer his revenge for all eternity. The only defense against the Dutchman's magical powers are his most personal treasures. These are items which he carried close to him while he was alive. Find all seven of the lost treasures in order to face down the Dutchman once and for all. That's it! All I have to do is find the seven lost treasures of the Dutchman to end this once and for all. Barnacles, I thought this would be a challenge. Yeah, me too. Of course, the biggest mystery, actually, is why Squidward was reading that book in the first place. Whoa, nice karate skills, Sandy. Mind if I, uh, kinda see if mine's better than yours? Hint, hint, wink, wink. Hiya, Sandy! Boy, am I glad to see you! You won't believe what happened to me and Gary this morning. Let me guess. Curiosity got the best of you again? Uh... Yeah, I guess you could say that. Well, don't you fret, little varmint. This squirrel knows just the thing to cheer you up. A good old-fashioned karate match. Just step into my arena when you're good and ready. Uh, oh my god. Again, guys, if you had a dirty mind, you probably would have gotten ideas from hearing Sandy say, Oh, let me guess, Curiosity got the best of you. Uh, oh boy. I am so going for hell that for that. <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding. Let's head on. Let's head on over to Sandy Street Dome, so we can have a karate match with Sandy. You'll actually be having three karate matches in this in this entire game, and they're all really, really ridiculously easy. So, all right. So this is the other costume in the entire game that you cannot access through the through the through the changing tents. 
And this is basically the karate gear. Um, there are multiple moves you can you can uh, you can use with it. And one one example move is by simply uh, mashing the B button. By doing that, you can do this move. You can also jump in the air and do a kick like that. And let's see. I'm not sure if there are any other moves, but yeah, I don't I don't think there are. Just yeah, just simply just stuff you can do with the B button. As far as I know, you guys can let me know in the comments if there's any any others. All right. Okay, now listen up, because I'm going to remind you how this all works. We've got a short amount of time to bust up all this junk in your yard. The person who breaks the most stuff when the time runs out is the winner. Just tell me which moves are legal, if you have the guts. I'll teach you a few moves. You can press the action button to karate chop, and press the action button a couple of times to chain attacks together, press the action button in the air to do a kick. Got all that? Ready, set, go! And the battle begins! The epic yet extremely ridiculously easy battle between Spongebob, I mean, uh, SB and Foe. Yes, they could not fit Spongebob's name on the score thing, whatever. But, whatever. So basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna be for 60 seconds just destroying as many of these, um, as many of this junk as possible. And you want to destroy much more than Sandy, but since she goes at such a, such a very slow pace, it's very, very easy. Of course, I, I shouldn't have to say that anymore, because pre pretty much everything in this entire game is easy. Like, even if you're trying to go for 100%, it's not as hard as people think it is. Like, I don't think there's anything in this entire game that's really difficult. Like, I was awfully surprised that... I mean, this is one of the, re one of the reasons why I was very surprised when I found out that... I was the only person on YouTube who ever did a 100% walkthrough, which is probably the reason for all the views it got. Okay. And the battle ends with Sandy kicking me. I At least I think that's what she did. Jeez. And yes, her karate skill is mighty. Mighty amateur, I should say. Even though we beat Sandy. I gotta admit, Spongebob, that was some tussle. You did okay for a sea critter. Oh, you weren't so bad. For a land critter. Ooh, that plum took all the fire out of me. I'm going home for a nap. Why don't you drop on by my tree dome and pay a visit, okay? That was sure swell of Sandy to cheer me up. I wish I could do something special for her. I know! I'll give her a present! But what would Sandy like? Oh, oh. Okay. And visit Sandy we shall. Alright, so... Well, duh. Let's, uh, let's head on back to Sandy's Tree Dome. <clears throat> so, um, anyways, um, Sandy's Tree Dome, in this game, unlike in Battle for Wiki Bomb, actually counts as a separate world, as crazy as it is. Like, just like Bikini Bomb, we're gonna be collecting letter tiles here. I love visiting Sandy in her Tree Dome. Where else in Bikini Bottom can you worry about dying from all this air? That's strange. I don't feel as dry as I usually do, and I don't need my helmet at all. Oh, the ground in here is soaking wet. SpongeBob, get your squishy little body over here. Help! Yeah, it seems like every SpongeBob game, at least from what I've seen, okay? I could be I there's a big chance it could be wrong here, but it seems like every SpongeBob game that I own if you go, when you go in Sandy's Tree Dome, you don't wear a helmet. Oh, wait, now, well, actually, I, I just now figured out that, that there is the except the exception would be um, Lights, Camera, Pants, which I have the PC version of. But when you go into Sandy's Tree Dome in that game, you do wear a helmet. So I guess that would be the one exception to me not owning a SpongeBob game that where, where you actually go into Sandy's Tree Dome wearing a helmet, just like SpongeBob does in the show. What happened in here, Sandy? I got all fired up after our karate match and wanted to practice some more, but I guess I got carried away because I accidentally poked some holes in the dome. This place is filling up faster than 11 gallons in a 10-gallon hat. What can I do to help? See if you can find something to plug the holes in the dome. You've got to plug all the holes to stop the water from coming in. And that's basically what we'll be doing for the first mission in Sandy's Tree Dome, as well as collecting all the doubloons here. So... At first glance, Sandy's Tree Dome may not seem like a big world. Well, it pretty much is compared to what it was in Battle for Bikini Bomb. I mean, Battle for Bikini Bomb, you, you can pretty much see the end of Sandy's Tree Dome from, from, uh, 
from one end, but in this game, well, that's a different story. I mean, look how big Sandy's Tree Dome is in this game compared to it was in Battle for Wiki Bomb. You got a huge world to explore here. I mean, not really, but I mean, it's not really that big right now because we, we currently we can only explore the floor. But you know, once we once we get later into this, it's gonna be pretty big. Like, there's gonna be a lot of stuff to do. All right. So let's uh, begin plugging those holes, and actually, you know what, I think we're about... We might have to end off the episode here, because, well, I think we're pretty much up to 10, 20 minutes right now. I could be wrong, because I actually did go... I did uh, go go to eat dinner for 20 minutes, so... Let's see, 42 minutes, yeah, that's probably... That might be a good stopping point, okay? So, in the next episode of Let's Play Battle before we came... I mean, Revenge of Flying Dutchman, god. I mean, it's the first time that it's ever happened, jeez. Um, we're going to continue um, plugging all the holes in Sandy Street with these conveniently placed acorns, okay? See you guys then. And I guess Sandy will not have a lifetime supply. I mean, a, I mean, won't, she won't have her supply of acorns for the winter after all this winter, sadly for her. But um, <clears throat> anyways, I'll see you guys in the next episode, okay? Thanks for watching. Multiclass Gamer signing out. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.